Now at 6, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And thanks for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 6. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Bridget Bureau. A new London police officer is on the other side of the law tonight. He appeared in court on domestic violence charges brought against him over the weekend. Fox 61's Julia LeBlanc was there, and she has the latest from outside New London Superior Court. Julia. 29-year-old Julio Gil Martinez is out on bond and on paid administrative leave as this all plays out in court. At the same time, New London police are conducting an internal review of the case. Your Honor, Family Relations is taking a referral on this matter. A New London police officer, 29-year-old Julio Gil Martinez, is now answering to domestic violence charges brought against him. The charges include threatening, assault, strangulation, unlawful restraint, and interfering with an emergency call. <laughs> Gil Martinez and his attorney didn't want to speak to reporters as they walked out of court. But a 10-page court document details a series of events leading up to this moment involving a two-month dating relationship between Gil Martinez and a 20-year-old woman. In those documents, Gil Martinez told officers they had a, quote, not always great relationship because he has some trust issues. The papers describe an incident in the early morning hours of November 14th at Gil Martinez's apartment where the two lived together. Originally, Gil Martinez told officers his girlfriend, quote, stabbed him with the kitchen knife after he accused her of cheating. However, the woman told detectives the two got into a physical altercation where at one point, quote, the victim felt she couldn't breathe and thought she was going to die. The next day, officers were called to Gil Martinez's apartment when they say he was making suicidal statements to a co-worker. The report says he eventually told police the victim was only trying to help him. I'm surprised. New London neighbors are now trying to process what happened. Being a police officer is supposed to protect everyone, you know, not being violent. Maybe they should go more in the background when they hire these officers because we wouldn't really want someone protecting our streets and our kids when they're, you know, in their own relationships, not really having the best. The new London police chief is responding to the arrest of one of his officers, saying in part in a statement, quote, please be assured that we take matters like this very seriously and are committed to addressing this matter with the highest level of diligence. Now, Gil Martinez's bond was set at $75,000 and he's expected back in court in January. We are in New London, Julia LeBlanc, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Julia, thank you. New tonight, your heating bill is about to decrease just in time for the colder season ahead. The state's Public Utilities Regulatory Authority, Pura, denied rate increases submitted by Connecticut Natural Gas and Southern Connecticut Gas. Pura is actually slashing revenue for both companies. CNG customers can expect bills to lower by seven to eight dollars on average. CNG asked for a $19 million increase for SCG. That estimate is closer to four dollars and they asked for a $43 million uh, increase. Pura commissioners voted two to one against the utility companies. Avangrid, the parent company of United Illuminating, owns both companies. Attorney General William Tong responded to the news a few hours ago saying, quote, their rate demands were packed with inflated profits and unnecessary expenses. Pura was absolutely right to slash their revenue. He also says his team will still go through every single rate case to make sure everyone is taken care of. We'll have more details on this development later tonight on the News at 10. It's a story you only see right here on Fox 61. The family of a man found dead in Pope Park in Hartford revisited the location where his body was discovered one year ago today with Fox 61's Matt Karen. Yeah, the family wants to bring attention to what they say is a crisis of addiction, suicide, and homelessness. Matt's in Pope Park to introduce us to the family who is still seeking answers. Matt. Well, Pope Park is a popular and beautiful place to visit. A pool, a playground, colorful leaves in the fall. But look a little closer, and it's also home to some of Hartford's challenges, including an increasing homeless population and a tent city that sometimes harbors secrets. He's unforgettable. Today is the day that they found his body. Yes. One year ago today, Victoria Emmons was told her brother Matthew's body. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Was found dead inside a makeshift tent here at Pope Park in Hartford. Every day I have to carry that and think about how my brother was found dead in a tent. Never in my life did I ever think that would be 
the outcome. The police report details how Matthew, who is 27, died of an accidental overdose and acute fentanyl and cocaine intoxication. His tent in Pope Park littered with drug paraphernalia. Seeking more answers. I don't know how he ended up here. Victoria hired a private investigator. Now armed with new evidence, police have reopened the case. I'm not saying that my brother was murdered, but certain things could have been handled better. A Freedom of Information Act request revealed that over several years, nearly a dozen bodies have been discovered inside Pope Park. I think that's the most concerning thing for me is that there were six bodies found here at this park within the last year. Including Hartford's recent November 9th murder of a 17 year old. His body found wrapped in a comforter in nearby Pope Park West. I know how that feels to have your, your loved one gone in an instant. And though 27 year old Matthew Emmons may be gone, his sister Victoria is committed to making sure he's not forgotten and that the unanswered questions that still surround his death are put to rest. I don't want my brother to die in vain. Um, we have such a crisis with mental health and addiction. According to a new report, Connecticut is dealing with a 13% rise in homelessness statewide over the last year. And while drug overdose deaths are down, thanks to more widespread use of Narcan, opioid use is higher than ever. Overdoses are up. Shootings are dying, which is good, and people getting involved, which is great. But I think the most important factor here is that finally City Hall is getting involved. If there is a silver lining, it's that violent crime in the capital city is down by a lot, more than 50% from this same time last year. It's a success story we'll be exploring in the days ahead. Reporting in Hartford, Matt Karen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Matt, thank you. Turning now to the weather, another dry weekend. So can we finally see some rain? Yeah, we're, we, we need it. Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank here with uh, a little bit of decent news here, Rach. Finally, we've got that much needed soaking rain in the forecast, not just a few sprinkles or hit or miss showers. And that's going to be later this week. The next two days will be dry, so our regularly scheduled programming. But by Thursday, the rain will come. And it's from this disturbance right here. Here in the middle of the country. This disturbance will move almost directly overhead and then it will actually stall. So I think while it rains all day on Thursday, we will see lingering scattered showers into Friday as well. Adding insult to injury with the latest dry conditions. We've had a gusty breeze today. Winds earlier today were up to 25 or 30 miles an hour. Now the winds are starting to come down a little bit, but they're out of the northwest and we're still seeing some gusts up between 10 and 20. The wind will continue to diminish to night and I don't think what will be as breezy tomorrow. Temperatures right now are in the 50s near 60 degrees for the New Haven area and by the news at 11 temperatures will be in the upper 40s. We're looking at overnight lows in the upper 30s to low 40s as we head towards daybreak tomorrow. Tomorrow we're looking at bright sunshine again less wind than we had out there today. Continued dry conditions with highs in the upper 50s to low 60s. We're going to talk more about that highly anticipated and rain your full forecast coming up in just a bit. Okay, Rachel, thank you. Right now, firefighters are working to put out two fires in our state, one being in Andover near Nathan Hall State Forest. It sparked this morning and has burned 26 acres. We're told it is contained right now. The other one is in Torrington. It's half an acre, but has reportedly caused some property damage. In Haddam, crews responded to a brush fire over the weekend. The flames broke out on Saybrook Road on Saturday. Officials say the fire started from downed fire lines. It spread more than an acre and was contained within an hour. One firefighter was injured. They have since been released from the hospital. A reminder tonight that an emergency burn ban is still in effect throughout the state. And new tonight, the trial for a Shelton teen accused of stabbing and killing another teen has been delayed. Jury selection was set to begin today for Raul Valley, but that has now been pushed to May 6th. Valley allegedly stabbed Fairfield prep student James McGrath during a fight at a house party in Shelton back in 2022. McGrath died from his injuries. Valley previously rejected a plea deal that would have given him 40 years in jail. Two parents, Paul and Susanna Leifer, are also facing charges for allegedly hosting the party and allowing 
minors to drink alcohol in their home. And a teen is recovering tonight after he was stabbed on the Cheney Trail in Manchester. Police say this happened yesterday after the teen agreed to a meetup on the trail. It's unclear how many people were involved. No arrests have been made at this time. Anyone with information on what happened should call Manchester Police. An update tonight, a company affiliated with conspiracy theorist Alex Jones asked a federal judge to disqualify The Onion's bid to buy InfoWars at a bankruptcy auction. The company First United American Companies was the only other bidder at the auction. The company alleges that the trustee overseeing the auction colluded with The Onion and Sandy Hook families. In a statement, the CEO of The Onion's parent company calls the claims baseless.